Hello, I'm Georgia. And I'm Ellen. And we are the ones that roll. Welcome to our podcast where we discuss disability and more. When we're not eating popcorn and watching High School Musical, because we don't do that much. So today we're talking about disability and dating. And prior to this discussion, Ellen set up a Tinder account and we're going to look at the responses between showing the disability in the photos and not showing the disability in photos. Okay, so I've just picked my six photos and we're going to start with no mention of disability in my initial profile. Show me the pictures. This picture here, which is the day I got my hair cut and I had it all nice and Selfie, styled. doesn't show anything below the waist. supposed to be helping my dad cook dinner, but I just sat and took selfies instead. Shows you as a person. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have this one, which is my personal photo. A glammed up selfie. I just true. learned to do my eyebrows. <laughs> Uh, Georgia came to my house for my birthday and we had wine and we were very proud of ourselves for drinking wine. And being very, what we also, considered I'm holding my up. glass really weird, like I'm not holding it. And then we have me in my bathroom, but no wheelchair involved. And then one of me and friends out to dinner because apparently it's good to show you with other people. And then my bio was really weird because I couldn't think of anything to write, so don't judge me. I put probably listening to Taylor Swift and join me about one day before me at the Globe. Okay, it's fine, we don't need to discuss it. And then my anthem, because you can put like pick a song on Spotify, mm-hmm. is My Shot from the Hamilton soundtrack. A very yeah. beautiful girl who likes to socialise and have fun out, but is also Stop. very well educated. So, as far as these people are aware, I do not have a disability. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's a match! How are you? Someone has face swapped themselves with a castle. Okay, so I've had three matches. We're going to message them the same thing, so it's a fair test. You are currently with boyfriend. I was just wondering how you first kind of mentioned the fact that you have a disability because you you should you guys met online didn't you yeah so that's why it's a bit different and i feel like it helps with disability in a way because we met online he sent me a message saying you're heaps pretty based on just my picture which my profile picture on a lot of things are generally just a selfie yeah. And then he said, oh, what's your Instagram? And from there, he kind of saw the odd picture, which yeah. was more obvious that I had a disability. So I never really said, just thought I'd mention yeah. I have a disability. Oh, but there was times where, I think it was like three months in or something, I said, I have to tell you this now, because I don't want to get too invested in it. And then you'd be shocked at something, leave, and then it's heartbreaking. I'd rather, you know, three months in, and then we could just forget about it and we move on. But I have to tell you some things about my disability. This is how it affects me. This is what happens. This is what I've got to do. This is the sort of life yeah. I lead. And you've got to be okay with that. And he did. He took that very well. So I'm very lucky in that respect. But I feel like a lot of people wouldn't. When I first realised you were disabled, I really didn't care. I didn't even think about it. It wasn't a big deal to me. I had zero reservations about being with you. Some people just look at disability and think, I don't want to get into that. I yeah, don't want to be their carer. I don't want to do this. To I don't want to do that. I'm not sure why people class it as undateable. I guess I just don't want to be seen as being a carer, but I don't mind. I will always help you, no matter what it needs. It doesn't faze me because you are born that way. It's just your medical health is the way you've always been. And even though you are in a wheelchair, you are still the most beautiful and amazing person that I've ever, ever known. It doesn't matter that you can't move your legs, you can't feel your legs and stuff. And you need help with certain things. I'm your partner, so I'll help you with these things because it's what partners do. The whole part of a relationship is the beginning. You kind of enjoy it. You get used to each other. You have fun with each other. You see whether you like that person deeper within. You see if you'll like mm. them for the bad part as well as the good part. So you don't want to go straight into. You kind of want to enjoy that initial. Yeah, although disability isn't a bad part. It's just no, a, it's it just changes, more. Can change. The dynamic of the relationship. Yes. And did he ever ask you anything about it? Not, not really. I've had questions, not just from Dan, but in in the past generally. So I did make it known to him what I can and can't. I broke it down as much as possible. These are the things, in general and in loving terms, what I can and can't do, yeah. basically. So he knew from the get-go. But I feel like that makes it quite hard in relationships because you need to get to a point where you know you can trust a person yeah. with all this yeah. embarrassing almost things that you've got to do. Yeah. And that's the same for anybody. Yeah, but also on the other hand, 
if you leave it too long whilst trying to trust someone, then you get too far into it. And if they do react badly, even though you trust them with it, then that will hurt you. That was one of my main anxieties. And still now, even though he knows everything, I'm very much aware of he can leave at any moment and give up. Because I am a bit more difficult than the usual girlfriend, and I know that. And before I was in a relationship as well, it's it's an anxiety of no one's going to accept me. And it's not an issue in yourself, as, as we've always mentioned. Like, we don't have issues in ourselves necessarily, but we are well aware of the issues other people have. Yeah. And that makes it difficult with dating because it's very much give and take. Relationships, though, there's always... Everybody has something that they're insecure about or they're worried about talking to other people. Mm-hmm. And the difference is that for a lot of people it's an emotional thing or it's a very hidden, private thing. Whereas with, with our disabilities anyway, they are literally the first thing you should see yeah. when you see us. So unless you do meet online like you, if you were to meet somebody in person, it would be very hard to avoid that conversation. They make that initial judgement of you as soon as they see you. Whereas with Dan, although he did see pictures of me with my wheelchair eventually, it was never something that was glaring him in the face. It wasn't his first impression. Yeah, so we could we could get on, we could talk, not learn about each other, and then deal with disability as and when it was needed to. Yeah. And I feel that that's important because we're still long distance now. Because we have more time to talk, that's very beneficial to my disability because he, he can learn to understand it in detail. I remember people asking me, like, do you ever worry that it's going to make it difficult or different? I'm like, yeah, all the time. Because people are like, some people are really rude about it. Some people are really horrible. I just struggle to talk to people anyway. So I think, disability or not, I would be terrified of speaking to anyone in a romantic setting yeah. um, but I think that disability adds another level to that because I'm constantly going like nobody will like fancy somebody with a disability mm. nobody will like want to be with somebody because it's a lot to deal with like so much baggage and people look at disabilities and they don't see us as like people are capable of like romantic feelings yeah or... there was that time where we had that incident with that person who was basically implying that disabled people are not attractive and... I believe his exact words were it was a turn-off. Yes, disability being a turn-off. And I think it's attitudes like that that make it very hard to yeah. trust and and want to put yourself out there. Yeah, because I remember that and I was like, oh, sh- if everyone is like that, then there's no hope. Exactly, and it kind of oh. makes you feel like if one person can think that, someone else can too. Yeah. It's all about really, like any sort of dating it's pushing forward and testing the waters and just doing what you feel is right and not necessarily forcing anything. If you don't find anyone at the moment, just wait and eventually things will sort themselves out. And it's all about finding the person to trust. And with me and my boyfriend, I was talking to my mum about it and she said, oh, does he know some things that you have to, to deal with and that he would therefore have to come to terms with? And I said, yeah, I told him I was in the first three months. And and she said about, basically before my boyfriend, I liked someone for a very, very long time. Like seven years long time. And, um, but still to this day, I've never mentioned to him anything I go through other than the fact that I sit down. But I never felt comfortable to tell him. And my mum said to me, it's funny how you just know when it's right to tell someone the right things. It's just, as I say, with any relationship, just trial and error and just trusting your feelings. Yeah, completely. And if someone betrays that, then that's their problem. You move on to the next. Did you find anything about the way people reacted? Like, if you mentioned that you have a boyfriend? I did feel like, although some were more, not patronising, but kind of jokey about it, like, oh, she's finally got one, then oh, someone can tolerate you. That, anyway. that was definitely a lot of family, friends, banter. Yeah. But I do feel like a lot of people were very over-patronising about it as well. Yeah. Like, one of my acquaintances uh, on Facebook <laughs> basically was like, oh, I've, I've just seen you change your relationship status, that's really good, like, well done, like, congratulations. And I was like, thanks, that is lovely. But also, Which why is... do you need to say that? And I do feel like that's a bit frustrating. But at I the end of the care. day, about people's opinions, whether they are patronisingly liking and supportive of it, or whether they're slating it, I don't care, because it's my choice. Yeah, I remember a few years ago, there was this like, viral post, and this um, high school student had proposed or asked this girl to prom, and he was able-bodied, and she had Down syndrome mm. and the whole article and all the comments are saying about how wonderful it was like you know lo- like romance isn't dead and like in reality the proposal was fairly like standard like there was nothing mm. wrong with it it was just 
he asked her to go to prom. Like, he didn't do anything particularly special, yeah. but it was the fact that an able-bodied person like, had the courage and was, like, strong mm. enough to, like, be with somebody with a disability. Yeah. And everyone was applauding him, mainly, for doing it. And I just think, if that was two able-bodied people, you wouldn't be bothered. And it's just this, again, it's other people's attitudes. People ask me, oh, does my partner have to have a disability? It's like, grouping people together, like, oh, you've got problems, you've got problems, you can have problems together. Yeah. And I feel like that's really wrong and, again, makes me feel kind of like, oh, I'm not deserving of someone, in quotation marks, normal. Yeah. So in conclusion, I feel like disability is not that much of a problem in dating other than the anxiety of other people's opinions and finding that right person to accept your extra life struggles Needs, that they can... Yeah that they would have to come to terms with yeah. and the difficulties and I feel like yeah. that's the only extra challenge. I've just given my phone to Georgia because we've done a new setup and we've changed all my pictures to pictures of me in my wheelchair. So we're gonna see what kind of responses we get. Any matches so far? Two or three I think. By the way Georgia's doing this because I'm terrible at starting conversations, like just in general. We have now messaged some people that we matched with and we're going to wait for them to respond. Um, so it's been a few weeks since I set up my experimental Tinder account and it's kind of hard to know what to say because I didn't get that many messages. I've got no questions about the fact that I had a picture of me in my wheelchair, which I guess is a good thing. I did get fewer messages when I used pictures of myself in my chair as opposed to just selfies or pictures kind of from the waist up. I guess that's one thing that I took from it but the nature of the question, like the nature of the messages sorry, was no different. People just didn't seem that bothered which I guess suggests that me thinking that they would be was more of a insecurity rather than a society thing. It doesn't help that there are shows that are literally called The Undateables that are about people with disabilities trying to find love. I was expecting a lot more kind of people to be rude or just kind of invasive questions and there wasn't really any of that so I suppose it's been positive. So many times in the media you see an able-bodied person in a relationship with a disabled person being treated as kind of like a hero or like they're sacrificing something or they're so brave to be in love with somebody with a disability. And I think that's why I got the idea that people wouldn't be kind of comfortable with my disability in a, you know, like a dating app. Thank you for listening to this episode of our podcast. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get notified every time we do an upload as we have future podcasts lined up. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Ones That Roll and tweet us any thoughts. Also, you can leave a comment in the comment section down below giving us any feedback or even any ideas of future things that you want us to discuss. See you next time.